Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dwarven.com and in this video, we'll show you how to install the latest nameless AOSP ROM based on Android 13 onto the OnePlus 8, 8 Pro, 8T and 9R. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First off, you have to install Android SDK platform tools. This is the official ADB binary given by Google and is required to type in and execute ADB command. So download it from the link given in my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. I have done the extraction in eDrive and these are the files of the platform tools folder as you could see. Next up, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute ADB command whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, you have to go to the settings menu on your phone. From settings menu, go to about device, then go to version and tap on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now in developer mode. So go back, again go back. Now go to additional settings and you should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone. Tap on OK. You might get one more prompt regarding RSA key fingerprint. So check mark allow. And with this, debugging is now enabled. So let's now verify the debugging connection. So go to platform to photo address bar, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform to photo as you could see. So now type in ADB devices and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB re debugging and try again. Use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB tweaks and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. Once you are getting this ID, your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that doing so will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. So if that's well and good, you could refer to my guide or the video and get this job done. In short, you simply have to boot your phone to fastboot mode and once you are in the fastboot mode, you just have to type in password flashing unlock. Once you do so, you will get a prompt on your phone. So use the volume key to highlight unlock the bootloader and press the power key to confirm. Your device will undergo a reset and then the bootloader will be unlocked. Once that happens, your phone will boot to the OS and once that happens, you will then have to re-enable USB debugging on your phone once again. So make sure to unlock the bootloader and then re-enable USB debugging. Once that is done, you will also now have to flash the Android 13 firmware, just the firmware, not the entire passboot ROM. So let me show you how that could be done. I have made a separate guide and a video on the same, but I'll show you once again how to flash the Oxygen OS firmware. Regarding that, your first course of action should be to that you run the latest Android 13 Oxygen OS 13.1 firmware. So at the time of recording, you could verify the same by going to About Device, then type on Oxygen OS and make sure that there are no pending updates. If you find any pending updates, then install that update right away. And it, as of now, it should show that version is up to date. So, so this signifies that there are no pending updates. Once you have checkmarked this requirement, you could now proceed ahead and flash the firmware. So for that, you have to extract Android SDK platform tools, which we have already got. We also have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking, then unlock the bootloader. We have also checkmarked this requirement. And now you have to boot your phone to fastboot mode. So let's carry out this task. So open CMD window inside platform tools folder and type in ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter. And your phone should now boot to fastboot mode in a matter of few seconds. So let's just wait for the time frame and then we'll proceed ahead to the next step. So it could take a few seconds to boot to fastboot mode. And once it's in the fastboot mode, make sure that the device state is being shown as unlocked. This signifies that the bootloader has been unlocked on your phone and you could now proceed ahead. So now you have to download the firmware for your phone. So you could verify the source from GitHub and download the firmware from this link. So regarding the firmware, as of now, I'm using a OnePlus 8T. You could refer to your phone from here itself from the list and it could take a few seconds to load. So let's just wait and then select your phone from here. In my case, it's OnePlus 8T, so go to your phone and make sure to download the latest firmware which correspond to the latest build number. In my case, I'm using the F67 13.1 and it's a IN which stands for India build. So make sure to download the firmware which correspond to your 
region and Pomme version as well. So I'm using the OnePlus 8T India version of F67. So download the firmware and then transfer the firmware inside the platform just folder on your PC. So as you could see, this is the firmware file. So now we'll have to flash this firmware file. So regarding the flashing of firmware, you will have to use the PWRP recovery for your phone. For that, I have made a separate guide. You could refer to my guide and all the steps on how to flash the PWRP recovery on every phone. In my case, I'm using a OnePlus 8T, which has a recovery partition. So in case you, if your phone has a recovery partition, you could directly flash the recovery to the recovery partition. But I will not recommend you doing that. Rather, let's take a safer approach and simply boot our phone to TWRP just for one time usage. So it does not matter if your phone has a recovery partition or not. This command is applicable across all the Android phone. So as of now, we will use this command to boot our phone to the TWRP for one time usage. So for that, if your phone is officially supported by TWRP, then download the recovery from the official side. However, if it's not supported officially, then download the recovery from the XDA website. Apart from that, do not use any other website. So download the recovery or IMG file. We only need the IMG file. We don't need the zip file. So download the recovery IMG file and place the file inside the platform to folder on your PC. So as you could see, this is the recovery file. Also, make sure to rename it to TWRP and it should be in the IMG format. So as of now, TWRP and the firmware zip file should be inside the platform to folder on our PC. So now we will have to boot our phone to the TWRP recovery. So type in fastboot, boot and the name of the file which is TWRP in our case dot IMG and hit enter and your phone should now boot to the TWRP recovery in a matter of few seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen. As I have told you before, we have used a boot command. So our phone will only boot to TWRP for one time usage. On the subsequent boot up, the TWRP will be replaced by stock recovery. And that's not an issue because we only need recovery for one time usage only. So now we have to flash our recovery file. So there are quite a few ways of doing so. Either you sh should have earlier transferred the firmware onto your phone. If you haven't done so, then that's not an issue. Your phone should now be visible on your PC. So you could now also simply copy the firmware and transfer the firmware onto your phone. So just paste the firmware file over here. Now, in some cases, it might happen that your phone might not be visible on your PC. So if that is the case with your phone as well, then you could also use the ADB push command to get this job done. So let me show you how to use the ADB push command. It's only for those users who cannot access their phone from the PC. So for let's using the ADB push method. So let me show you how that could be done. So first off, for the ease of convenience, let's rename the firmware file to something shorter. So let's just rename it to FW. And now we will be transferring the file onto our phone using the ADB push command. So open CMD window inside platform tools folder and now type in ADB push name of the file, which is from FW dot zip forward slash and SD card. And the firmware file will now be transferred onto our phone. It will take a few seconds. And with this, the transfer is now complete. So you could either transfer using the ADB push command or simply use the MTP and transfer the file from your PC itself. And in any ways, once you have got the file, you now have to flash the firmware. So regarding this, it will ask you a, a couple of questions as well. So let me show you first go to install and select the firmware zip file and perform a write through to flash it. So first off, it will show you the information of the firmware. So and if you are, you could confirm it, the phone name, the phone region and the firmware version. If that's well and good, simply use the volume up key to confirm and proceed ahead. Next step, it will ask you if you want to update the modem. It's highly recommended that you update the modem. So use the volume up key to select yes. And with this, the modem will be updated and it will then flash the rest of the file as well. It will do so across both the slots. You don't have to do anything else. So the firmware has now been flashed across both the slots. And now you could select reboot and select system. So with this, we have flashed the firmware file on both the slots and we could now proceed ahead. So just to repeat, the firmware flashing will ask you two questions. The first one will ask you to verify the firmware information. If that's correct, 
simply hit the volume plus key, volume up key. Then it will ask you if you want to update the modem. Again, select yes via the volume up up key, and then it will flash the firmware across both the slots. Once that happens, simply select reboot the system, and your phone will now reboot to the OS. So with this, we have flashed the firmware, and we could now move ahead with the next step. So with this, we have check mark this step as well. So let's now move ahead to the next step. So now you will have to download the ROM file and a few other files from this link. So as of now, we need the ROM file, the recovery file, the boot, VB Meta, and VB Meta system file. So let me show you all these files. This is the ROM file, the boot, recovery, VB Meta, and VB Meta system file. So the ROM file will be in the zip file, whereas the boot, recovery, VB Meta, and VB Meta system, all the other four files will be in the IMG format. So make sure to transfer all these four files, all these five files. Inside the platform tool folder on your PC. Once you have transferred the files inside the platform tool folder, you could now move ahead to the next step. So next step, you will now have to boot your phone to fast boot mode. So again, re-verify that USB debugging is enabled on your phone. If that is not the case, then you can go to settings menu, then go to additional settings and go to developer option and enable USB debugging. Likewise, I will also recommend to change the system UI from here to file transfer. So with this, let's now boot our phone to fast boot mode and proceed ahead. So type in ADB, reboot, bootloader, and hit enter. And your phone should now boot to fast boot mode in a matter of few seconds. So let's just wait for our phone to boot to fast boot mode. And once that happens, I will recommend you to verify if the drivers are installed or, or not. So at this stage, type in fast boot devices and hit enter, and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then you will have to install the fastboot drivers. You could refer to my guide or the video from this guide and install the fastboot drivers. Once that is done, right click on the Windows icon and choose Device Manager. Now expand the Android phone section and make sure that your phone has been shown as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the serial ID signifies that your PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and you could now move ahead to the next step. So now that our phone is in the fast boot mode, we could start the flashing process. So please verify that the name of the files are exactly similar. This is the boot file. So its name is boot, recovery, VB meta and VB meta underscore system. If that's well and good, you could now simply copy paste this command. So first off, let's flash the boot file to the boot partition. So copy this command and paste it here. And it will now be flashed in a matter of few seconds. So once that is done, you will now have to disable the verification check by flashing the VB meta file. So copy this entire command and once again paste it in the CMD window and hit enter. Once that is done, you will again have to disable the verification, but this time you will have to use the VB meta system file. So copy the entire command once again and paste the command in the CMD window and hit enter. Once that is done, you will now have to flash the nameless AOSP recovery. So copy the entire command from here and now paste it in the CMD window and hit enter. It will now flash the recovery and it will take around five to six seconds. So once that is done, you will now have to boot your phone to the newly flashed recovery. So just type in fast boot reboot recovery and our phone should now boot to the nameless AOSP recovery. It will take around five to six seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen and then we could move ahead to the next step. So as you could see, we are now in the nameless AOSP recovery. So now your first course of action is to flash or sideload the ROM zip file. So for that, go to install update and now select ADB sideload and your phone is now in the ADB sideload mode. Let's verify the same. So open CMD window and type in ADB devices and make sure that your phone is being shown as sideload. If that well and good, you could now sideload the ROM file. So for the ease of convenience, let's rename the ROM file to just ROM and the complete name becomes ROM.zip. So rename it to ROM and hit enter. And now we could sideload the ROM zip file. So now just type in adb sideload ROM.zip and hit enter. And the sideloading of the ROM file will now begin. And you can keep a track of the same from phone and on the CMD window on your phone. The step one of two is the one that takes the maximum 
amount of time the step 2 of 2 will only take a few seconds moreover in the cmd window the process will get stuck at 47% when that happens then the flashing will get complete i will show you what i mean let's just wait for the flashing to reach 47% and then we will move ahead so guys the flashing has now reached 47% and as you could see the flashing has now been done on your phone you will get install complete with status 0 and in the cmd window you will get total transfer 1 and 2 so with this we have flashed the nameless rom and your next course of action is to do a format data this will remove all the data from your phone so make sure that you have taken the backup beforehand so now go to factory reset select format data factory reset and select format data so all the data from our phone will now be removed once that is done you will now have to reboot your phone to the recovery mode once again it's extremely important so select advanced and select reboot to recovery and your phone will now reboot to the nameless aosp recovery so let's wait for the time frame it will take around three to four seconds and with this we are now in the recovery mode and now you could easily boot your phone to the os so for that simply select reboot to system and your phone should now reboot to the nameless aosp rom do note that the first boot up might take up some additional seconds that's completely normal and nothing to worry about from the subsequent boot up it will not take that much longer and as you could see it's the boot animation and our phone should now boot to the os in a few seconds it's for the first time that it's taking that much longer from subsequent time it will not take that much longer so let's just wait for a few more seconds and as you could see we have now in the setup screen so let me quickly skip the initial setup process and i will take you to the os directly let me set up my phone offline and check mark the rest of the requirements and let me skip this as well so guys with this we are now in the nameless aosp recovery it's based on the latest android 13 as you could verify from here and you could do some customizations from the wallpaper and home screen it's the android 13 customizations and you could change the app grid as well choose the wallpapers from here and let me show you the settings menu and then the about phone as you could see it's running the latest nameless aosp and so guys on that note i round off this video if you have any queries with regards to any steps do let me know in the comment section and guys please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks thanks a lot for watching